You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey everyone, it's Mike and I'm here with Chris Neckelman from Chile. Chris, it's so good to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Mike. This is really, really an honor to be here with you. Really. Well, it's an well, it's my so honor to have you because I've seen your work and I'm really admiring you from afar, even though we live far away. Um, I love to see your work. I love your attitude and your approach. And I thought it would be fun to have you on to talk and share your experience and your thinking and let, get, let people get to know you a little bit more. So mm -hmm. uh, tell us who you are and what you do. Oh, well, that's a important question. Who you, who am I? Um, I will start with what I study because every everyone uh, thought that I'm a graphic designer. I'm not. So you're not to be a graphic designer to do our job. Um, I study audiovisual communications and journalism. So I have two careers. Um, I used to work on a bank, and that's. <laughs> really different um, place that it's don't supposed to be because I'm a creative person. But I used to work on internal communications on a bank here in Chile. It was an important bank in here. I worked there for almost six years, I hmm. think, six years. So it was a lot of time. Um, and well, then I changed my perspective of life there. Um, I discovered this beautiful world of visual thinking, uh, first with a sketch now, then with graphic recording and all of that. And <laughs> my bosses fire me in the bank. So, <laughs> yeah. But when you say, oh, if they fire me, the most people feel bad because yeah. it's really bad really difficult to say yeah they fire me so they don't need it anymore for me my work right yeah but um but i think it's the best gift they give me because mm. uh they give me all the knowledge that i took from those years working there but then um help me to give me the impulse to mm -hmm. start my own company that mm -hmm. uh, it's keep, it keep ideas is the name so i'm working on that right now and it wow. was a very very beautiful uh journey wow I, this is the more a smaller story of course because yeah. it's so much yeah, and, we, and we can get into it like uh part of what we do is always origin story which we'll do next but mm -hmm. i can relate to you i remember doing a contract once where they didn't need me anymore and Mm. I was really happy <laughs> because I, yeah, was, me too. You know, I was like, oh, I feel such a relief to be done with that job. Now I can do the next thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that feeling. It's a weird thing because you feel like, oh, they they don't need me anymore. Like I should feel bad, but I, I feel great <laughs> because yeah. it's the, moving to the next thing, you know. So you, you remember the the movie Spider-Man when with Tobey Maguire, right? Mm -hmm. When he walked, I think it was the two or three where it uh, was Benham and he was walking on the street of New York, very happy. You, I don't know if you remember that. I mean, I don't know yeah, if you it's saw been, that, while, that movie. Yeah. yeah, but he was walking very happy. That <laughs> was me when they fired me. So I was walking very, very happy with a lot of pride and the head up and <laughs> because uh, it was a really gift. And, I'm very That's happy good. for that. Well, yeah. that I think is a perfect lead into your origin story. So begin from maybe when you were a little kid, like, did you always draw? Like, was this part of your always. thing? And okay, so start from there and then take us all the way through the bank thing and how that more details on like how that turned into your business and what you've learned in your business and what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I draw since i have memory um i remember myself uh, in in my bedroom with the pencils and, and notebooks drawing and creating ideas and storyboards and stories blah 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 that was a lot of creative process at that time and i don't know why i stopped it in uh, to do it in, in a moment uh, maybe when i started to work my very first job uh, was that bank 
and because I, I finished my first career at audiovisual and I started working there uh, doing communications. So uh, what happened there it was, um, let me think, uh, in 2012, yes, um, I did a, I don't know the name in English, okay, but it's a, like, like a MBA, but very very tiny mm. in in spanish it's called diplomado mm. i don't know Diploma. how to say it yeah. maybe i don't know if you have like the a same short, yeah there's like a short yeah. term maybe it's like one year maybe something one like year that. exactly yeah, yeah. it was one year so there um we have to learn a lot of things and and read a lot of things mm -hmm. so i didn't uh know how to keep the those info in my head so mm. my my teammate in in the bank uh, was a graphic designer uh, showed me a book um was game storming mm. uh, so mm. i watched uh, more about the the job that uh, sunny brown did with mm -hmm. doodle revolution the ted talk and then because of her i get to you mm. and i watch your book I said, wow, I want to buy this book, please. So I bought it. And I remember uh, when I read it, and um, I'm not a good reader, uh, I have to say. I'm mm -hmm. not a good one. But your book, I read it, I think, in an afternoon. That wow. super for me because I don't do that. And, and I read it once and once and then again and then again. And again. So, was a very cool moment because I say, wow, I'm not the only one in this world who think in this way, who can uh, work with drawings, not only for fun, not only for art, for a purpose, with very important purpose. So I started to, to read a lot, to, to practice a lot, and on that um, diploma, I started to take the notes of the class with a sketch notes. And my teammates was, oh, what the hell? What is that? It's so <laughs> cool. And I said, I, I know. I, I, my head works like that. So I started to do it in the diploma and also in my job. And in my job was the same reaction was, wow, what, what is this? It's so cool. You're so creative. And, and after that, I started journalists. I did the same thing with the sketch notes, of course. And then they fire me. And, and me, just go back um, for a moment. Uh, they fire me because I, um, and let me know the word, but I decrease, I think is the word, my, mm. my improvement, my work because my dad died. So oh, yeah. it was a very difficult moment, personal difficult yeah, moment, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. And um, as I told you before, I'm like a Jim Carrey lying liar, so I can lie. And so I had to live those um, emotions, those emotions. And so they thought that uh, I wouldn't be longer there because I mm. wasn't working in the same way. And so i say, okay, Cool. And so they fired me and I started to work um, my own IDF company. Mm. And this is beautiful because in the uh, uh, day, world day of a sketch note, the first one, mm -hmm. I um, send my work and I won one of these prizes. Oh, wow. So, That's, I hadn't yeah. realized that. Yeah. Yeah, it was so cool. And I won, um, and it wasn't an interview. I think it was a, more like a talk with uh, Janelle King. Okay. Yeah. And I told her uh, how I can work on this. I mean, someone will pay me for drawing, really? <laughs> Here? And yeah. Uh, and also the, the the money that you need to pay your bills, right? Yeah, of course. And your house and the food and everything. And she encouraged me and said, yes, you draw so much better than me. And I said, you can do it. So, okay, I take it there, that um, that feeling and I started my, 
my very first company, I mean, it wasn't a company, it was only my name, it's called the Lente de Cris. It mm -hmm. means uh, Cris glasses, because oh, okay. I have to glasses, use glasses. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it's an invitation to see the world how I see it with my glasses. Mm. So that, that's the origin of the name. Mm -hmm. So I started there and in a moment it was so, so big. So I have to evolve to um, this new company called Keep Ideas. And the reading of the name is keep the ideas uh, with the with the drawings, of course, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keep those all information alive. So yeah. that's my story. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, tell me a little bit about your first job. Like, was it difficult to get your first job when you first decided I'm going to do this? Janelle has, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm. I think I can do this thing. Um, was it was it scary or hard to get the first job, and then how did they react to it? Hmm. And was that was uh, that something? Yeah, I remember that moment. Um, it wasn't difficult to get it. it was very very good. Um, I don't know. Maybe the the people who know me start talking with other people. And actually, I never uh, do anything to uh, find clients. All the clients. Hmm at me i don't know why but that's beautiful yeah i think when you are in the right path uh, the universe uh, brings you everything that you need and mm. i never look for a client and i'm so grateful for that mm. but my very first job uh, i remember it um i had two pencils no me three pencils yellow green and black wow. no more no more uh and a rear piece of paper very um how you very say thin. It? it's, not, it's not, nothing the opposite really thick very thick paper thick okay the, really thick so it was like a, like a carton or something. so it was very thick and i did my graphic recording there um wow. i remember when when they say okay we go I was running from my with my house, running, say, yeah, my first job. Uh, and my dog, Elvis, that's his name, was jumping with me. He said, hey, I'm <laughs> my first job. I couldn't believe it because wow. they would pay me what I need at that moment for leave. So it was, what the hell? And that's it. Wow. Everything that was a real... Got a real vote of confidence from the first job. I wonder, so this makes mm -hmm. me curious about, because you got so excited when you were doing your job, you were doing this yeah. in your diploma uh, mm -hmm. course, you were doing this at work. So people are noticing like, hey, Chris is doing something different and it's really cool. And I, yeah. you know, I've not ever seen that before. So I think in some ways, maybe that was the preparation, right? You kept doing it, doing it, doing it. People mm -hmm. are aware of you doing it. And so when, somebody says, hey, we need somebody to draw our meeting, like, well, Chris, of course, right? Because yeah. you had been doing this, like, that's where, and that, I agree with you, like, word of mouth projects are always the best, because they sort of come to you. When you said the, you talked about the, the universe conspiring, right? I, I just read uh, <laughs> yeah. Paul Coelho's um, The Alchemist, which is sort of this, sort of this philosophy, little philosophy book, and he talks about this concept, right? So it reminded me <laughs> of that book. Um, but that it sounded like it almost feels like your path was headed to this place and it was only a matter of time and you needed like the reason yeah. you were so excited about getting fired <laughs> is because now you could <laughs> yeah. really begin that journey, right? You could like, uh, like the shepherd in Paul's book, he sells all mm -hmm. his sheep and he travels across from Spain to Africa. It's like a mm -hmm. huge step for him. Right. And, um, all the kinds of things happen after that, but <clears throat> So it's that was sort of like that defining moment for you in some way. That's really fascinating yeah. to hear. Yeah. Hmm. Was a defining moment actually. Interesting. And so now, obviously, you don't use three pencils and a, board, a piece of no, paper. No, no, no. <laughs> so you've sort of, you know, o of course, um, over time, have built tools and and clients and stuff. Can you tell tell me a little bit about maybe one project that you're working on that you can talk about that gets you excited that you could share with us? Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm working, so you can watch my, my board. There is my... Oh yeah, board. your project board, okay. Yeah, it's like a Kanban. 
<laughs> so there's a project that we're working on. Um, we work a lot on videos because as I told you, I, I'm audiovisual and I work now because th this is beautiful. Um, I started alone, but now my husband will work with me. So it, this is a family mm. project. So nice. it's very beautiful. And my husband is also audiovisual. So um, we work a lot of with videos and different kind of animations, videos, wiper videos, stop motion and, and animation, like true really animation now we're working uh with a bank too <laughs> it's the competition <laughs> of the Full of, circle yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's the competition of the bank that i used to work and we're working with um trying to to tell the people in a simple way uh, the agile method the, mm, so yes. they're, they're trying to, to, to do Agile now. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that. So it's a series of videos. We're doing there um, like whiteboard, digital whiteboard video, because we, we do an analog too. And I love that that uh, analog uh, videos because you can do a stop motion and have something different. But with digital, it's also beautiful because uh, you can change everything more fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're working on that and we love to do videos. Uh, it's, mm. it's like um, back to the origin for me. Mm. Well, and you know, videos are sort of the language of now, right? So much mm -hmm. is presented in video format. So, but I think the interesting thing is <clears throat> you're taking this format, which has sort of developed its place in our culture, but then you're doing something different with it. You're drawing with it, right? Which is you see a little bit of it, but not most of it is people talking or video, you know, from a camera. So to see mm -hmm. it digital or hanging over a table or on a wall and somebody drawing is really fascinating to people, seeing, watching people, watching mm -hmm. things being drawn. So I think that sets you apart and makes you unique, which is really cool. But also you have to improve all the time because in a moment will be a lot mm -hmm. of drawing videos. And yes. now do a, an animation video, like a, a character moving the hands and and eyes is so typical now. So I try to right. always uh, do something different, maybe mix uh, techniques. For example, for example, I um, someone talking on the camera, but maybe a drawing appear here, but mm. a drawing, not an animated character is yeah. different. So I, I think you can uh, mix techniques. So I, I think it's a must do because yes, uh, in a moment will be part of the typical things, the animation. So you, you don't have to do that. You have to improve right. all the time. Yeah, I mean, years ago when the RSA started doing these whiteboard videos, like it was mm -hmm. radical and no one did, no one saw that stuff before, right? Yeah. But now you can like buy software that will fake it where you- Oh, do, you, I you hate import, that you, software. You know? Right, so I mean, for many customers, that's good enough, right? For internal, mm. for internal departments who don't care about like production quality. And just want to mm. communicate and they think maybe doing it this different way works for them right so now you're competing against software yep. which you know also always gets better right and gets more realistic or whatever so i think you're right you have to always be on your toes and mm. develop new things and new ways of and blending things and absorbing ideas from other places and mixing it in it sounds like you're doing that which is great that's really good I do all the time. I hate to uh, do it in one way. I love mm. to mix from different uh, perspectives and different areas. Mm. That's good. Yep. That's good. So um, that sounds really great. And I want to shift a little bit here. So <laughs> we talked a little bit before we began that this pandemic seems like it's continuing longer than anyone predicted. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I like to offer in the podcast are ideas for how people can deal with it, right? It's not easy. Mm -hmm. So tell tell us a little bit if there's a few things or a couple things that you do to keep yourself from going crazy, like when you're stuck in the house or you can't do the thing you want, right? Is there some practice or some activity that is sort of a happy place that helps you deal with it? Mm. Uh, for me, the pandemic is divided in two parts at the beginning. Mm -hmm. when I was alone with my husband and my daughter and now with my daughter so because I, mm -hmm. I was pregnant in the pandemic and yeah. I get a daughter 
So I became a mom. So I think it's divided into. At the beginning, I do a lot of yoga. Uh, I did it before the pandemic and a lot of meditation. Mm -hmm. Now I try to do it, but it's very difficult with a baby. <laughs> so mm, yeah. I try to to keep the this yoga and meditation too. But um, also, I try to spend time in the sun. Mm. Not not in summer, of course, because now in Chile we're in summer and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But um, but in, in in the winter, a lot of sun and try to connect with um, with the nature. I think mm. there's a lot mm. of city here, and I, I don't like that. And also try to work on a project and something different. Uh, for me, my job I call it as a jobby job and hobby because i really love to uh, do this so i started to work on um uh on a podcast too in spanish because we don't have podcasts in spanish mm -hmm. for visual thinking mm, good. Uh, there's a lot in english but not in spanish in, in the spanish community i mean latin community especially is very very big and so i started working on that I had a lot of um, episodes recorded, but I want to release it when I have a lot because with a baby it's difficult. So yeah, take time to record. It's not easy. Um, I also started a project for uh, virtual learning. I recorded myself with um, um, uh, like e-learning um, workshops. Okay. So I, I do that too. Um, what else? I think that's it. Ah, and also, of course, I have to um, go to for a walk with my dog, and mm. that's very, very important. I mean, mm. at least five minutes, but take the connection and with the nature. Take mm. your shoes for a while and put in, in your mm. your feet in the grass. I think mm. I th those things work for me. Mm. That's good. And, you know, the reason that I do this in the, each episode lately, as the pandemic began, was just giving people ideas who are listening. Maybe they hadn't thought about doing something mm. like that, right? So if it sparks an idea or puts you in a mindset like, ooh, I hadn't thought about something like that, and then it gives you another way to deal with it, right? Because now we're two years in, maybe the thing that worked for two years isn't working anymore, and you need some new ideas. Mm. So that was sort of the thought around that. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, an infinite canvas sketching app built for tablets with a stylus, like the iPad Pro, Microsoft Surface, and Samsung Galaxy Tab. Concepts' infinite canvas lets you spread out and sketch in any direction. Everything you draw in Concepts is a flexible vector, so you can move your notes around the canvas or change their color, tool, or size with a simple gesture. Search Concepts in your favorite app store for infinite, flexible sketching. Um, so that leads us to a, another shift, and this is now, uh, lots of people look forward to this, the tools portion mm. of the podcast. So tell me a little bit about your favorite tools, the things you use and you rely on and you love. And we'll start with analog first and then digital after that. Perfect. Um... I had here some tools. Mm. The zipper is uh, opening. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't do the, uh, use this tool for graphic recording, but I did. I do it for um, drawings. Okay. I really love this one. Uh, it's a, oh, there's no, ah, pencil. Pencil with brush pen. Yeah. And you can push it here and squeeze the, it. Yeah. Yeah, squeeze it. Yeah, the, and the, the barrel is kind of squeezy uh, rubber right, or plastic or something. So mm -hmm. you can bring the... And you can refill the... this. Yeah, that's nice. And you can change it. Um, I really love this one because it's like a Japanese pencil. And yeah. I, I love everything about Japan. And I mm -hmm. really want to go there. So this is one I really love. Um, another okay. one is... Oh, I don't have it here, but... Ah, this too uh, is... Kuretake is um, mm. Kuretake is a Japan uh, pencil. Oh, sorry, I mean Japanese pencil. Sorry, and I don't know uh, how is the pen. I mean the, the it's like a roller uh, or something. 
Mm, oh, it's no. a little tiny brush. A little tiny brush. Yeah, it's like a tiny brush. Just... And it's not really a brush. I think it's made of like um, felt or something like that or mm. fiber, something like that. Like it's solid, but it, it has flexibility. So it's sort of acts exactly. like a brush. Yeah. You can I do a, a different kind of lines. Like, yeah, like really thin, thin and thick. or you press down and it gets thicker. But unlike exactly. the brush where it's, you know, breaks apart, it won't break apart mm. the same way. And the other one, I, I don't have it here, but it's a, like a simple pencil, but the, the point, the, I mean, how do you say it? The, the, the point, the, the tip. The point, yeah. sorry. The point of the um, pencil is very, very, very thin, like um, 0 0.05, and I really love it to, to draw. This tool I for drawing, and here I had the typical tools that everyone has as no islands. But here is a tip. I know we will we'll talk about tips <laughs> in, later, but here is a bonus tip. I use these um, marks, I think, mm. with the paper that I really used for graphic recording. So yeah. I use the um, the pencil there i took it and i there and you wrap I can, it so you, yeah, so you draw I on the paper know. you use and then you wrap it on the end so you can see what it really looks like on the paper thank as you. a visual yeah thank you for that that's a great and idea also, uh you can show uh there how oh. the pencil can work i mean if you can draw a thinner line or i see thicker line yeah so you can actually so, demonstrate the the different widths possible with that tip Yes, because some pencils are very similar. So, yeah. for example, here I have this one. Uh, like this is SB. I don't know what means SB mm. uh, pencil, but <laughs> you, can, you can see two. two levels, you can see yeah. two lines. Yes, and this is an M, and you have That's have a medium. different. Yeah. Yes, but on um, the one line, interesting. But, but they look identical. if you don't have, the, yeah, exactly. If you don't have that, you look identical. So. Especially it's if very easy to confuse. I would think especially when you're under pressure and trying to move fast, like you need all those little tricks to help you identify quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a so, great idea. I'd never thought about that. A little tip. Yeah. yeah. It's a very good one. It works a lot for me. That's a good tool tip. And mm -hmm. um, ah, also analog tools. I have books here. Okay. I really love this one. I don't know if you have it. Oh, it's Rodia. Called... Yeah, it's a yeah. French company, I think. French company. I think the um, paper is amazing. Amazing. Mm. And this is my travel book. And my last travel was in New York, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. that's Kevin McAllister. Oh, uh, yes. I love New York <laughs> City, too. Yeah, it was my very first time. So... Um, this is a very, very good uh, book. And the other one I really love, but this is from Loyland too. Uh, this is this Oh, one. I know this brand. Yeah, this is um, a German brand. I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, uh, Neuland. Yeah, Neuland, it's, it's I think, works. Yeah, they, they produce those. They're really nice. It's a nice size, too. It's a little bit bigger than A5, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, very used to um, to talk about that kind of size. I mean, yeah, A4, I, I know it, but I'm not uh, used to the, the size. But yeah. it's more than a hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, it's if, a very fun. <laughs> if you put your rodeo on the rodeo, if, if you put on the rodeo on top of it, it's a bit bigger, right? It's like just yeah, a little bit definitely. bigger. Yeah, not too much, but a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But it's a very, very good book, and the paper yeah. is so beautiful, and had a, a little, let me show you, little dots there. Yeah, the uh, dot grid is great. So, my sketch notes work nice. very well there. Nice. I used yeah. one of those, uh, so Neuland, um, I got one of those from Neuland, and I used it for my bullet journal for quite a while. Mm. I really liked it, so I really liked it as a bullet journal, because the paper was just thick enough that it would hold, but not too thick. Mm -hmm. And the size is a little bigger, so I could fit more drawing and things if I wanted to. And it lasted a long time because there's lots of pages there. So compared mm -hmm. to, say, a Leuchtturm or a Rodia, which has yeah. 220 pages, that one has more. Okay. So it ended up lasting a lot longer. So I've actually considered maybe I should go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good book. Yeah, those, Not are great. Book, actually. those are great books. Yeah, I love that, that one. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so now talk a little bit about digital. You're doing AV, so obviously you use digital in some way. Um, yep. what, what kind of tools are you using there? The typical tools that everyone said, <laughs> iPad <laughs> Pro <laughs> and Procreate. Uh, but, but why? Why Procreate? I think that's important. Yeah. It's not because everyone uses it. Procreate has some things that are very, very useful. You can work with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pencils. But let's be honest, <laughs> we use maybe five. Right, so, right. Yeah. And also, I think the most important thing in Procreate is that, is that you can record what you do and when you're drawing or doing a graphic recording. So you can took this video and some do some edited and create a new uh, video with music mm. and all of that. So that's very, very good. Um, also, you can work with different size of um, canvas mm -hmm. with layers. You can export it in PSD, in PDF and PNG. Mm. So that's very good. What I think it can improve Procreate uh, if they, I think would be great, actually, it can start to work on vectors and not pixels. Mm. It would be great to do work in illustration. I mean, mm -hmm. with Illustrator, I'm sorry, the program. Right. I think will be, wow, that would be great. Mm. But you can create different groups. And I think it's very, very good one. Mm. Interesting. I know there's yeah. two tools that can do vectors that are uh, useful. One is mm. concepts, right? So yeah, they, I know. They're it. sort of vector base. The other one that's new is Adobe's um, uh, Fresco, which mixes yeah. uh, bitmap and, and vectors together. But I, I would think if you're going to use Illustrator or Photoshop and you mm -hmm. need vectors, that would be a natural one because it would yeah. um, probably sync well. I haven't tested I have that concepts, out. actually. I, I have it here. And I mm. I had uh, Adobe Draw, I think it's the before Fresco. Yeah, I, I think, think Adobe Draw is going away. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not working anymore. And those are my tools. Uh, and also for, for digital, I use this glove. It's not the Michael Jackson ah, glove. I've seen that one, it, yeah. Yeah, it's very useful. Very, very useful. You put it in this way. So it way. covers your pinky and the ring finger and your... And your this and is your the ring, ring finger? Yes, yeah. And this is pinky? Is that the, the name pinky? Yeah, in English. Yeah. Because yeah. they call the ring finger because typically when you're married, you put a ring on that finger on the left hand. Exactly. In the U.S. and I think in Europe, it's on the right hand. Maybe for me, it's so. here. I, I don't have it now, but here is yeah, the, yeah. the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so this is this glove works very well to move your hand uh, more fluid in the in the iPad, and I think it's very very important tool. Yeah. To this I, think, I think also um, like if you are working on on any kind of digital tool, even Procreate, there are times when I accidentally touch the screen and I make a mark. So by having that glove on. If mm -hmm. you're moving fast and under pressure, it's not going to make a mark because it exactly. takes away the You capacity. can avoid that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes mm -hmm. away your finger touch, yeah. which is cool. Great. Yeah. Well, um, you sort of uh, gave us one tip already around marking yes. your markers with color strokes in th both thickness and color. So mm -hmm. we can claim that as an extra tip. So now... It's a bonus track. A bonus tip, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so... so I would love if you have three tips for someone, let's imagine as someone listening, watching, who is doing some kind of visualization. Maybe they just started, maybe they've been doing it a long time, but they feel like maybe they've just hit a plateau and they're not really, they need like inspiration to kind of move to the next level. What would be three things you might suggest to them, either practical or theoretical or mindset? Mm. I think I will um, give you some three tips that I, I use actually all the time. Uh, I, I had uh, write it right here. Let me see. Uh, one, I mean, the first one is look for people. Uh, you like their work. Mm. Uh, look for reference and, and try to analyze how they work, how they do the lines, how they do the, um, the letters, the colors. Um, maybe try to find someone who as a different type of work that you, you, you do. I mean, for example, someone who use, um, oh, how is the name in English? Uh, aguarela in Spanish is, oh, Probably the like, name in 
Like watercolor, like, uh, maybe? Yeah, watercolor. That's the name. Watercolor. For example, I don't use watercolor. So mm -hmm. find someone who uses watercolor. How to use it? Maybe you can try it once. And if it don't work for you, don't use it. But you had um, this beautiful path that path, I'm sorry, that you understand and and try to understand that new technique and maybe you can mix it and use it in a different way because you are working with different tools. So I, I think that, that can help a lot. It's like mm -hmm. um like uh Austin Cleon like a, still like an artist. So yeah. It's like a that, that way. And I think that can help you understand the fundamentals of the different uh, techniques and create your own formula, of course. Uh, the second tip, um, this is important, I think, patience. Mm. Patience, practice, and try something different. Um, but a lot of patience. Uh, I think everyone wants to create beautiful sketch notes or graphic records and anything right away um, now it's a process uh, when when I read, uh, read your book I, I found a lot of different uh, styles there and I tried to do it I copy literally copy yeah, yeah. a lot of drawings in my in my notebook to understand this and I watched my my very first sketch and uh, was the other one in the book I said oh it's so ugly, but it's my process, and yeah. now I'm very proud of it. So that's my third um, tip: show your work, show your evolution, show mm. honor your path, and uh, honor mm -hmm. uh, what things uh, bring you where you are now, and um, all the things that you went uh, through, on what you have learned, and all of that. I think. You have to show it, and and that's the way to understand what you um, you learn, but also can help others to say, ah, oh, first very first uh, jobs of Chris was very ugly, and now she's doing this. Okay, I can do it. So I, I think I can that make uh, can make a connection with the people to understand that we are not gods and goddess. We are people like you, and you can do it too. I, I think that's the my three tips. Mm, those are great tips. I especially like the last one, you know, mm. where you're um, you just showing the process. I just did that um, two weeks ago with Diana Soriat, where we were, oh, we yeah, were showing nice. really old sketch notes that I I looked around in my shelves and I found like the oldest little pocket moleskin with my first sketch notes in it, and was showing that on camera and what I was thinking at the time and. It is so different. Like I look at it, and there's elements of it I see. Oh, I see. I still kind of do this thing, but it's um, mm. improved over time. But yeah. I kind of do the same thing. It's just that I've practiced enough to kind of refine it. And then there's some mm. things like you know I did it only in one color. It was in a small book, and it was sort mm. of it had its own style. And I don't I don't really do that style the same anymore. So it is sort of a both a memento of the past, but also there are the elements. The foundations are there, right? If you if you mm. look at the connection, the style is there, but it just is new. Like I hadn't figured it out yet, and it took time to process exactly. over time. You know, mm -hmm. that's a great idea, and I think that's good. It's good to be reminded where you came from, and I love that idea that everything is a part of your story. Maybe even the things that you're not as proud of, mm. because if you didn't have those things, it wouldn't move you into a new direction. The story of you. So what happens to Chris Neckelman if you uh, never get fired from the bank job. Maybe you're still working at the bank and you're not doing any of this stuff now, right? Like mm. you think about how that, how the life could have changed if something slightly different happened, you know? Mm. Actually, I think uh, maybe it, it, I, I wasn't fired. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I can work in UX or Agile, I think. Right. It will be something similar. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm part of this. I, I can be in another place, I think. So maybe in a different um, enterprise, but uh, in, in the same, I, uh, I don't know the name, in the same part of the 
techniques or, or now I don't know how to say it. Yeah, but the same thing, <laughs> the same you kind know, of work. <laughs> I kind of wonder too, like, um, you know, when when the time came when you left that company, like, you talked a little bit before we began about how when your dad passed away, it sort of made you rethink mm -hmm. what was most important to you. So you started to think like, maybe you were thinking even, like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Like, mm -hmm. you'd done it for six years, you knew how to do it pretty well. Mm -hmm. And you sort of maybe had reached a peak, like you talk about always wanting to improve in your current practice. Maybe it was just you realizing like, I've, re I've reached the point where I can't get any better. I'm, my contributions have sort of reached their peak. And maybe mm -hmm. now it's time for someone else to do that and to grow. But I need to do something else. And, you know, in your grief with your father, you just couldn't see it or, you know. And obviously that you said that the being released from that was really positive for you. So... So it's it's kind of interesting to, to see. It would be interesting to go back and reflect on, on that. I'm sure mm. you have many times. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot. I I think um, that moment was very important to understand where I want to live, mm. when. I mean, when in, in the sense of I want to live in this kind of. Um, moment of stress people and business people who are working mm. and, and moving all the time uh, very stressful people with the funds and i want that or i want to live a life with my family mm. and i remember myself a month uh, before my dad died um saying dad i can talk right now i have to go because i have a lot of work mm. Didn't happen a lot of time, but I remember that moment. And now I'm, I have the moment to stay with my daughter, I stay with my husband, I stay with my family, and also working what I love. And I don't have someone like a boss telling me uh, you have to do that. So I'm, I'm working on my own um, purpose, not for for other purpose from other people. Yeah. So I think that's um, was the real moment for me. Yeah. Well, it's really. I'm glad that you made that choice and that life turned that mm. way because you're making a real contribution to the community. And I love that you're focusing on Spanish language because I have this sense. So I've talked to. I've made an effort to try and find people in Mexico and South America and Spain and people who. And also, I need to find some Portuguese speaking too because I think there's a whole community that. Mm is there but i don't know how much it's served i guess you could tell me more like i know my book never got translated to spanish i don't know why i've pursued no. other spanish language publishers and none have been interested so but i know that there is a community there and i know there's a uh people ready for it obviously there are people like you so i'm really happy to hear that you're mm -hmm. doing that you're that you're going in that direction i think it's so necessary and scary so <laughs> Thank you for that work you're doing and the work you will do, because I think you're having a, a positive impact. We're a lot. We're a lot in Latin America, especially. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, there's a beautiful community in Colombia, in Argentina, too. Um, in Brazil, uh, we don't speak the same language. Portuguese right. is different right. from Spanish. We yeah. can understand a few words, but... but uh, there are people too in in, yeah. in Brazil, um, in Uruguay, uh, in Paraguay. There's a lot. There's a yeah. lot um, in Costa Rica too. Yeah. That, this is in Central, Central America. America. Yeah, but there's a lot of people uh, who are working a lot. They know a lot, yeah. and they want to contribute. And we have a beautiful WhatsApp group. <laughs> It's, mm. I think it's the only WhatsApp group I really like to have. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> because we are so um, generous. Mm. If you have a question, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know how to, um, wh wh what uh, can pay me for this? Uh, yeah. How can I do it? Uh, yeah, you can do this. Blah, 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 blah. So it's a very helpful community. Mm. And, and it's really really beautiful and there's a lot of people so uh, that's why i started um uh, two years ago i think yeah maybe two years ago i started my 
contribution with IVP. I was a board mm-hmm. member of IVP. Mm-hmm. I have to get it away because uh, I, I was pregnant, so I have to focus on my pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I'm not there now, but there's two people, one from Mexico, I mean, it's Canadian, but from Mexico, and she speaks beautifully Spanish and English too, so she's a very good one, and also someone from Brazil. So now we have more people in the board of IVP uh, to represent ourselves. So uh, I think that's very, very beautiful. Mm, that's really great. I'm glad to hear. And um, this is the point where I ask for any kind of links. So website, social media, it sounds like you're working on a podcast. So if someone who wants to hear Spanish language discussion about visualization, um, mm. we can point them at your website, which I'm sure that you'll be posting or you'll mm-hmm. post it on your social. So tell us like what's the best places to find you. Okay, I you can find me in two places in I, I like very a lot uh, Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. so my personal Instagram is uh, lente de cris. Cris is with k. Mm-hmm. So lente de cris. Um, also in my company uh, keep ideas CL. Uh, I mean uh, CL. <laughs> I say mm-hmm. it in Spanish, sorry. <laughs> For Chile, uh, right? Keep, CL, yeah. CL is for Chile, yes. Keep idea CL, and you can follow, uh, find our work there. Um, also, my our website, uh, keepideas.cl, is one of our we- websites. Um, well, this the podcast is not released now, but mm-hmm. it will be released. And and the name of the po- podcast, um, I I don't know if I I will release it with the name of keep ideas or mm. um ah, what's the name just about that <laughs> i don't recall <laughs> ah yeah yeah uh, the name is in spanish creativos visuales it's mean oh, yeah, uh, visual perfect. credits yeah yeah i love so, it that's perfect i i think that would be the name or also maybe you can find it with keep ideas name i don't know i have to research more on yeah, spotify yeah. and all of that but but that would be the name Cool. Well, and I, I like your idea of uh, recording ahead. That's what I do with this and then release mm. um, weekly. It just makes it easier to manage when you have lots mm. going on. So good, good move. Yeah. And then I like seasons too. It gives me a break in between to get excited again and to think of who to ask and do all the recording so that when the mm. season starts, everything's ready. So yeah, that's, I can't wait to see. And please do share when you do release it so I can make sure I, I promote do- it. Yeah. We can put in, we can do a sketch net army, uh, uh, posts to make sure mm-hmm. sure people see it and go to it so well this has been so much fun chris this has been yeah. really enjoyable i'm so glad that you could come and share with us a little bit about yourself i think people are going to be excited to hear and uh you're representing part of the spanish-speaking world so for mm-hmm. those who uh, are spanish-speaking maybe you live in latin america maybe you live in spain or you'd live anywhere and you'd like to hear and see things in your language then check out yeah. Chris's work and um, maybe you can, uh, you know, if you're, you're uh, waiting for that podcast in Spanish that will be coming yeah. soon. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that. And also there is an, another person who working on a Spanish podcast too. So he's mm, from good. Spain, but I think that's great. More I think and better. Yeah. Yeah. More is better. Having more resources, more voice is always better. Right? Yeah. So, well, cool. Thanks for being on the show. And I'm so happy that you could be here. For everyone who's listening, this will be another episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast. Until the next episode, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.